Welcome to Simply Learn with Hive versus Pig. On one side we'll have our sharp stinger on our black and yellow friend, and on the other side our thick hide on our pig. My name is Richard Kirshner with the Simply Learn team. That's www.simplylearn.com. Get certified, get ahead. As we all know, Hadoop uses MapReduce to process and analyze big data. Processing big data consumed more time using traditional methods. Hadoop MapReduce was used to process big data faster. And you can see the before thing where we had computers all over the place, each one doing their own little thing, and really hard to track any one big piece of data on there. So processing big data consumed more time. And then with the MapReduce, afterwards, processing big data was faster using that setup with the Map and Reduce. And there's a specific code, Map and reduce. Although learning to think in map and reduce is just as important. So map and reduce is primarily implemented using Java codes. Lengthy complex codes were written by programmers to process data. This proved to be disadvantage for users who were non-programmers. To overcome this issue, Hive and Pig were introduced. And you can think of your shareholders at a meeting or the CEO of the company. They might know enough to write the programming script, but they don't have the time. They don't have the time to sit down there and write 120 lines of Java code every time they want to look something up. So what we're going to do today is we're going to cover the need for Hive and Pig. What is Hive and Pig? HiveQL, or HQL a lot of times it's called in Pig Latin. That's the terminology for the languages. Data models, execution modes, features, and commands. So we'll start with the need for Hive. Facebook found it hard to process and analyze big data, as not all the employees were well versed with high level coding language. So again, imagine you have the manager who's working with all these different people and he needs to go in and do a quick query and he can't. The only way you can do it is to call up the programmers and have them take a spot out of their day to write the query for him and then of course if he's like studying something that could be a real big problem. It becomes a half hour research and query into what's going on becomes days. So the solution, they required a language similar to SQL which was easier to write. Hence Hive was developed with the vision to include the concepts of tables, columns just like SQL. So just like your SQL query language. And you can see here with the Hadoop map reduce, poor guy is uh, sweating, I guess, or crying backward, upside down. And then once they have SQL with Hive, you know, very happy guy solution. What's nice about putting Hive and designing an HQL to mirror the SQL is that a lot of people already know SQL. You know, so if you do have a shareholder who's looking something up in the database, they probably know the basic select star from table from database. So the need for pig, where did pig come from? So if that's where Hive came from, where did pig come from? Well, similarly, Yahoo also found it hard to process and analyze big data using MapReduce, as not all employees were well versed with the complex Java codes. So just like Facebook was having a problem, so Yahoo was too. And the solution, there was a necessity to process data using a language which was easier than Java. Yahoo researchers developed Pig, which was used to process data quickly and easily. And you can see here again the, um, the poor manager sweating it out, trying to find out the information he needs to do his job, and the solution Pig, and now he's nice and happy. So what exactly is Hive? I mean, we've sort of talked about it, but let's go a little bit more in detail. Hive is a data warehouse system which is used for analyzing large data sets stored in HDFS. So here we are with a huge Hadoop file system uh, spread across maybe 10, 20, 100 computers. And then Hive uses a query language called HiveQL. And a lot of times you'll see that abbreviated as HQL, which is similar to SQL. So they mirror each other. That makes it really easy for someone who already knows SQL, very common, to come in and switch that query over to HQL. Especially when you're already backing up a lot of your uh, SQL databases that you might be running on your enterprise machines into your data warehouse. So you're already using SQL moving stuff over. So it's not a big step and it's very useful to keep those um, similarities together. So what is PIG? So if Hive works on SQL, what does PIG do? What is PIG? Well, PIG, like Hive, is used to go over a data warehouse system and it's used to analyze large data sets stored in the Hadoop file system. Now where a difference is it is about data flow and the data flow is then used to analyze the data in PIG. Let's look at the HiveQL or the HQL so we can see what the actual properties of these two are. Hive Query Language or HQL, HiveQL, is a query language used by Hive to process and analyze data. Declarative language which is exactly similar to SQL. 
and HiveQL works on structured data. And at this point, let's go ahead and bring up the Apache website. And since Hive is now part of the Hadoop framework, you can go to hive.apache.org and you can look up Apache, uh, the Hive on here. You'll start seeing references for Beeline. Beeline is the update to Hive. Beeline has everything Hive does in it plus some new features. Most places I worked with still use Hive. Um, I don't see a lot of upgrade to Beeline yet, although it's not a big upgrade and places are starting to upgrade to there. And you can on here go to the language manual. You'll see the different commands. You'll see Hive reference, the Beeline reference, our H catalog. If you go under commands, and we'll look in more detail in just a minute on this, you have the language for getting in and out of there. As you go down, you'll see uh, basic Hive setup. And if we go back a page, we can go down here and look at, uh, here it is, data manipulation statements, our load, insert, update, delete. And once you're in here, you'll see that these look a lot like SQL. So when you're loading the data, very similar setup. So it mirrors the SQL query language on there. But we have our Hive or HQL, our Hive QL, uh, and then we have Pig Latin for Pig. Pig Latin is a procedural data flow language used in Pig to analyze data. Pig Latin is similar to SQL but varies greatly. It is used for structured, semi-structured, and unstructured data. Ten lines of Pig Latin code equals about 200 lines in Java. So we're looking at MapReduce for either one of these. We might be talking just a few lines of code versus a couple hundred lines in the MapReduce Java setup. And just like we looked at the uh, Hive QL, let's go ahead and look at the Pig Latin one and pull up their website. And just like we had hive.apache.org, you can go pig.apache.org. Look at the open source on here. And then they have like the news, the releases, and you can go in here and also look at the actual um, script language. And we'll go down here under the read the documentation. You'll see an overview. You can actually do the getting started on here, or Pig Latin Basics. And because Pig Latin isn't already based on something we know, such as SQL, like HQL is, uh, it's a little different. You'll see that you have uh, some different setup, and we'll look a little closer at that when we get into some of the couple basic setups on here and how they work but you can see here there's full line of commands in here and you can skim through the all the commands some of them would look familiar like load you probably understand what limit is you limit your returns to the top 10 that kind of thing so let's go ahead and drill down a little bit into the language and let's look at the hive data model so in the hive data model we have tables in hive are similar to those in the rdbms we have our partitions tables are grouped into partitions to group the same kind of data based on the partition key and then we have our buckets. Partitions are further divided into buckets for better querying. And what's nice about this is if you already have an SQL server running on your enterprise computers and you're backing that data up into your Hive setup, then you already have all your data and tables and everything defined. And that makes it a lot easier. Same querying coming over which is a few minor tweaks to alter it to the HQL. With Pig Latin data model, we have what we call an atom. Atom is a similar value of primitive data type, like integer, float, string. It is always stored as a string. And you can see we have 10 or 50, so it doesn't matter. The atom is going to store those as one or the other. And then a tuple represents a sequence of fields. It can be of any data type. It is same as a row in the RDBMS. So you can see here we have a string and we have a uh, integer going in there, TED50, and that's our tuple. And then you have a bag. A bag is a collection of tuples. It is the same as a table in RDBMS. It is represented by the brackets in here. And then the map. Map is a set of key value pairs. Key is of character type and value can be of any type. It is represented by the square brackets. And you can see under the map how everything is kind of combined. So you have your name Mike, your age 30, so you have your uh, bag, you have your setup in there which is all connected to the atom, the tuple, and the bag. So when we talk about execute modes, Hive execution modes. Hive operates in two modes depending on the number and size of data nodes. Uh, we have the local mode. It is used when the data is small and when one data node is present. And you can look at that as uh, you're only doing a small amount of data on your computer or you're testing out what you're going to do on the larger data set to see how it works and make sure everything works correctly. And then you have your map reduce mode. It is used when there are multiple data nodes and the data is large. And in pig execution modes, depending on where the data is residing and where the pig script is going to run, pig works in two modes also. And to no surprise, we have the local mode. In this mode, Pig Engine takes input from the Linux file system and the output is stored in the same 
file system. So you get a little bit different here. We're looking at the Linux file system versus the uh, local Hadoop single node. And then we have map reduce mode. In this mode, queries written in Pig Latin are translated into map reduce jobs and are run on the Hadoop cluster. Pig runs on this mode by default. And if we're going to continue to compare the two and see how they stack up against each other and why one would work and one wouldn't for certain setups, let's go ahead and look at the features. So in Hive, used by data analysis. When we talk about Pig, used by programmers and researchers. So you can think of query versus uh, researching the data. They both are kind of similar. There's a lot of overlap there. But that is the basics, is usually who's going to be using it and why. Hive query language is a language used. So we have HQL or HiveQL. Pig Latin is a language used for Pig. Now Hive works on structured data, does not work on other data types. This is very important. This is very key, one of the key differences between them. Because Pig works on structured, semi-structured, and unstructured data. And you can think of it this way. Hive is great for querying a database, tables, and columns, and rows. Where Pig, when you start getting into word count and analyzing, in this case, Facebook posts or postings that people have written, you start getting into the need for something like Pig Latin, which does a little bit more and different than the HQL or HiveQL. And then Hive works on the server side of the cluster. So anything you do goes through that server side setup where Pig works on the client side of the cluster, meaning that the code comes through, is uh, compiled, and then applied to the cluster and executed. Hive does not support Avro, and it really doesn't need to. Um, Avro is the language which kind of sits and allows other languages to access it. Because it's a query language, usually you send your query off and you designate it to Hive, and once you get the query back, you process it with whatever you need to, or you just look at the results on there. Where Pig supports Avro, because a lot of times what you're pulling when you're doing, like, say, word counts or analyzing documents, that is going to go into some other programming language. And so Avro is that nice layer in between that lets Pig Latin go into whatever you're working in. And then Hive supports partitions. Pig does not support partitions, although there is an option for filtering. So it has its own kind of partition-like setup, where Hive has a very clear partition setup, just like you have in SQL. Hive has web interface. Pig does not support a web interface. So you can still go into your terminal command line, but we don't have, you can't log on through the internet. And you don't need to, because you're going to run your terminal and then submit that into the server, versus Hive, which needs that interface since it's running on the server. Side. And then we'll go ahead and take a short look at the commands. A few Hive commands. Create database, database name. That should look real familiar if you've done any SQL. Show databases. Same thing, shows the databases. Now we can create a table inside the database. Create table, table name, ID integer, name string, and so on. All the different uh, columns you have in there. And then you also add your uh, row format delimited fields, terminated by. That's really important because if you don't show where it's terminated and how those things load into the database when you're creating it, then it's going to come up and uh, cause problems down the road. And of course you have show tables so you can see what tables are in your database. With Hive, you actually type in uh, Hive and it opens up a Hive prompt, just like you see here. And you can see, you can do a select round, round the number for 2.3 from temp. So when you rounds it off, basically what that is, rounds off the value to the nearest highest integer, 2.3 becomes 2. And you can select floor 2.3 from temp, rounds off any positive or negative decimal value down to the next least integer value. So 2.3 now becomes 2. And you can do select ceiling 2.3 from temp. This function is used to get the smallest integer which is greater than or equal to the specified numeric expression. Now that's just some basic uh, rounding off features. Again, these are all stuff you could run in SQL, and this language will look just like your SQL language or very similar to it. This way, if you're using SQL on your main server, as you put your stuff into the data warehouse, you can directly mirror those tables, those uh, databases, the tables, the columns, and even your selection. And when you create those queries, you almost bring the queries straight over into Hive. It makes it very versatile in a company and very easy for the top management or somebody who's not a programmer to go in there and do these basic queries. And even somebody who is a programmer to be able to do these basic queries might use this to save a lot of time since it's so fast to put together a, a query 
line. Now we'll look at a few pig commands. And one of the biggest things I find going from into pig is doesn't really, it mirrors some things. You start to see some of the terminology you might see in working with Spark or something like that, where they talk about bags and tuples and things like that. But it also is its own language. So it makes a little, a little bit more of a learning curve a lot of times in a company. And you can see here we have Hadoop DFS put. That's a Hadoop command, path name, pig input for input to be moved into the Hadoop file system. And then you just simply type pig. So just like hive, you type hive, pig starts the pig mode. And then you create, say, a relation equals load, pig input using pig storage, comma separated as, and then you have your breakup. And this loads the file from the HDFS into pig. This is very similar to your SQL setup. So we're bringing in our columns and our rows, but keep in mind you can do a lot of things that aren't structured data. Uh, so this is one aspect of the pig. It goes beyond this, but this gives you a chance to compare it to the HQL or the HiveQL language. And then we dump our relation one. The results from the previous load command is displayed using dump. And when you're doing pig, it doesn't execute until you run the dump. So once you, until you've hit the dump button, it doesn't actually execute the code. And then we could do a relation one filter equals filter relation one by column name equals attribute name. And then we can dump the relation one filter. Filter command shows the results for that particular filter that we give. So you'll see some overlap there as far as the logic of filtering. We could do that with the select command in HQL. And you can see that we're loading the data in very similar since this is a structured data setup. But then pig, like I said, goes a little bit beyond the SQL. So it's not as easy to spin a company or individuals up on PIG, but it's also more robust for analyzing data and going one more level than the, than the HQL or Hive does. So we've covered the needs for Hive and PIG. What is Hive and PIG? We looked a little bit at the HQL and the PIG Latin. We looked at data models. We took a quick tour of execution modes and features, and we looked at some of the commands you can use. And of course, you can always go to the Apache web website for the full list of commands. With that, I want to thank you for joining us today. For more information, visit www.simplylearn.com. Get certified, get ahead. Feel free to also post questions here on the YouTube video or join our YouTube community. We do have a monitor track so to help answer those questions or come visit us on the website. Happy learning. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.